Can President Trump actually order American companies out of China? What is Steve Bannon's new film, Claws of the Red Dragon, all about? And why does he describe Chinese telecom giant Huawei as the greatest national security threat we have ever faced? How does President Trump differ from previous presidents, both Democratic and Republican, in his approach towards China? What did previous administrations fundamentally misunderstand about China and the ruling communist regime? And what is the role of Wall Street and Western business leaders in funding and empowering the Chinese Communist Party? And how can we expect the Hong Kong protests to play out? This is American Thought Leaders, and I'm Yanya Kellek. Today we sit down with Steve Bannon, former White House Chief Strategist to President Donald Trump and former Executive Chairman of Breitbart News. We discuss how, in Bannon's view, the Chinese Communist elites have gained power and wealth through access to Western capital and technology and used that power to stifle dissent and advance its self-serving global ambitions. And we look at the threat of Chinese telecom giant Huawei and its ties to the People's Liberation Army which are spotlighted in a new film produced by Bannon called Claws of the Red Dragon. Uh, Steve Bannon, excellent to have you on American Thought Leaders. Listen, thank you so much for having me. Steve, so in September, you're going to be releasing Claws of the Red Dragon, a film that's going to expose Huawei, the Chinese telecom giant. Tell me more. Well, one of the issues about Huawei, you know, it's the... It's the uh, technological arm of the PLA. It's a driver in 5G and quantum computing throughout the world. And whether it's Western Europe, Canada, the United States, or Australia, people, particularly citizens, don't really understand what's in back of Huawei, the deception, what's been in this uh, indictment. Uh, and it's uh, so the, the New Tang Dynasty uh, TV was making a pilot for the beginning of a series. I got involved a couple of months ago. And I said, listen, this is exactly what the Canadian people and the American people need to see, which is a drama, not a documentary, that goes in a very dramatic, you know, great acting, great photography, uh, great music, to really allow the citizen to understand what the situation is with Huawei. So I'm very excited. This is a very powerful film. It talks about the arrest of the chief financial officer, who's also the daughter of the founder. I think it, it opens up and explains in a dramatic form exactly what's going on with China's encroachment into the technology area throughout the world. People will be shocked uh, when they've seen it. We've already tested it with some people. I've tested it here in the United States in Washington, okay. D.C. <clears throat> yes, I've had a couple of test screenings of the rough uh, about a month ago, tested it with some fairly senior people in the U.S. government, and they were stunned by some of the revelations in the film. And so that's why I told uh, uh, Joe, Dr. Joe, about we've really got something, I think, very powerful here. And what I'd like to do is make a big deal about the, the opening in, in, uh, in Canada. And what I'm doing right now, I'm fielding calls from all throughout the world, Australia, uh, Europe, uh, in the United States to cut distribution deals so the entire world can see this. I think they're going to be very, very impressed. That's incredible. And Dr. Joe uh, Wong, of course, the president of NTD Canada, our sister media. Um, I, I'm going to read something that I p struck me in the press release, which kind of blew my mind a little bit. I mean, you describe Huawei as the greatest national security threat we have ever faced. That's America. I mean, bigger than nuclear war? That, this, this is quite the statement. No, because here's why. The future of all technology, the backbone of the future of technology is 5G. It will be a dominant technology. Right now, the path that Huawei's taken as a front for the PLA is to basically take over the networks and the components throughout the world. If we allow this to happen, even for a couple more years, Huawei is going to control basically the communication systems of the West and therefore will be able to control the West. You know, even as bad as nuclear weapons are, and they're terrible, even as bad as some of the opponents that we've had has been terrible, that, that has been fairly localized, the damage that could be due. Right. This is something that could actually, and it can do it in a stealth manner. Remember, we're in 2019 and we're finally having the conversation about Huawei because the CFO was arrested in Canada, you know, w within the past year. But up until then, if you go to Europe, you see Huawei in the billboards, you see Huawei in the stores. There's been absolutely no discussion. The elites have let down the citizens of both Canada, the United States, and Western Europe. And now this film is the beginning 
of the exposure of that. So, you know, to your point, um, I looked on the Huawei's website, and Huawei claims to currently serve 3 billion people around the world. Yes. It has almost 200,000 employees, uh, 170 countries, penetration in 170 countries. I had someone, an old student of mine, text me and say, hey, all our cell towers in Vancouver, around Vancouver are Huawei. Is that a problem? Um, wow. That, it feels like it's been under the radar. How did, how, how did this happen? And well, one of the things, you know, there's an indictment out there. The reason she's under house arrest in Canada today was this indictment. You know, they want to extradite her to the United States. This indictment, when you read it, and here's the thing, nobody in this town's read it. You know, okay. I'm talking about people in power have not read it. You've got to go read, and we're going to put it up on the website, you've got to read the indictment of Huawei. It starts back in 2007. I mean, this has been a history of their nefarious activity for quite a while, and it has never really gotten exposure, really hasn't gotten any media exposure. Part of that is the misinformation campaign that the Chinese Communist Party